Her research interests are as diverse as her activities. Thus, she is interested in the epistemo epistemological basis for a procedural and plural concept of knowledge, which she developed in her dissertation. In the epistem epistemology of design, to which she devoted herself in her habilitation, but also in topics such as the philosophy of science, of technology, and design science, the epistem epistemology, oh, Entschuldigung, okay, sorry, and history of analytic philosophy, technology ethics and technology assessment, and design research and design theory. Today, she presents us her practical perspective on integrated research. Thank you very much, and thank you for having me here and being able to tell you a bit about our research and our approach to integrated research, and especially about integrated ethics, which I see as a part of integrated research. Why integrated ethics for technology development? To find an answer, let's have a look at an emerging technology field which got a lot of attention recently, AI technologies. Here is an example which uh, you all know. It's an automated translation system. There are several around DeepL. And this is something to which we already get used to. So we were so astonished a couple of years ago when this came up and it translated in an astonishing quality text from one language to the other. Here's a very recent example of AI technologies, chat GPT, a lot of discussion around at the moment. It creates chats and an automated text production and raises a lot of questions on authorship, on creativity, but also on veracity. AI technologies also come with a lot of hopes, especially in the field of medicine. So here's one example, a lot of hopes of better diagnostics in the field of cancer, for example, and better treatment by personalized medicine. But we all learn that AI technologies also come with a lot of problems, with a lot of discrimination if they are not well made and with scandals. And here's one example. This is the COMPASS algorithm, which is used for risk assessments of criminals and the questions how likely they will re-offend. And Paul Popica has shown that this algorithm discriminates against black people. So this is something what we don't want to have. Technologies, AI technologies, which discriminate, which have unintended, unwanted outcomes later when we use them. And this is why, why we think integrated ethics is so important. It's important to integrate ethics in technology development as early as possible. So what we see in the field of AI technologies at the moment goes for other technology fields as well. And here we want to avoid unwanted and unintended consequences by the early implementation of ethics. And I will show you um, how we um, do this at the moment at the Berlin Ethics Lab, what our questions are and how we proceed here. So we will have a look at integrated ethics in research and development. And here we will look at our vision and challenges and the methods development and at integrated ethics in education and curriculum development. Here we started, um, we think this is equally important as in research, and here we started a think tank and we launched the Berlin Ethics Certificate, which I will explain a bit later on. So let's start with the vision and the challenge for integrated ethics, and I will use for the moment AI technologies, as this is a research area where we work a lot on at the moment. AI ethics is as a problem, and this is often addressed as the principles to practice gap. So what we've seen here is the emergence of many ethical guidelines. However, these guidelines are often very abstract and they have general values and principles there, like transparency, explainability, fairness, trust. 
and these values are vague and open to interpretation and for a direct use in development processes, this is insufficient. So what we have here is the principles to practice care. Also, we have not empirically sufficiently tested methods for transferring these principles into practice. And many of these methods do not align with ethics as a reflective practice. So the danger here is that we have pure ethics checklists, ethics washing and ethics shopping. So there is a lack of methods, missing methods. And this is what we want to address in our work. So when we look at emerging technologies or new developments in technology, there is something what has been addressed as the Colin Rich dilemma. But in uh, technology development, in the early phases, we have hardly any knowledge about, um, about how the technology be will behave later on in society, about consequences. And the more the technology is developed, and this uh, here's the time scale on the lower axis, the knowledge raises. So the better the technology is developed, the more we know about potential unwanted consequences, how the technology will be in the interaction with societal actors. On the other hand, and this is what you see on the blue line, the options to change decline designability, Gestaltbarkeit in German. So at the moment, at the early phases, we have more ways to change, to interfere there. But the more a technology is developed, for example, money has been invested or de developmental paths has been set, it becomes more and more difficult to change. And this is why we are looking for methods for the early phases, very at the conception and start of technologies. But here we have to, ch to face this challenge with only a few knowledge about the technology and potential consequences. And to better understand where we are working at the moment, we can look at these effects on different levels. So for AI technologies, we can look at AI technology development from a global perspective. And this is very important as these technologies do not stop at boundaries, and uh, many of them are used on a global level. We can look at technology developments on a societal level. What the high-level expert group did for Europe, define the cluster of the AI with these values, for example, that was on, on this level to, to integrate ethics. We can look at the integration of ethics on an organizational level. So companies have issues, ethical guidelines, for example. And we are, with our method development, especially interested at this project level. So for concrete development of technologies, of applications, how can we embed in these processes ethical considerations? And it doesn't mean that we embed this very early on, that we don't need other um, means of integrating ethics. So this is just one approach, and we need additional measures on other levels as well. But this is our focal point at the moment. So for those with an engineering background, this might seem familiar. This is an adaption of the V model. The V model is a famous and very well-known process model in engineering with the idea or idealizing uh, technology development that we have different steps and levels in the technology development. And with each step, we get a detailing, further detailing of the technology. And with each detailing, we get testing. And our idea is to integrate in this development processes this ethical testing together with ethical reflection. And what we want is to start really early on in the early phases up there where the requirements are defined. And this is just an example, integration of ethics considerations in the V model and the process model, but this also goes for agile methods or other approaches. It's just an example how to embed ethical reflection in a process.
So what's integrated ethics? When we look at the question, how can we integrate ethics in research and development processes, we see there's a spectrum of different measures and approaches. So what we can do is to have regulation. Regulation or laws, they are um, more general, and we will soon have this with the AI Act, for example. Other approaches are, for example, checklist approaches. These are more domain specific. And um, so in these checklist approaches, ethical expertise is framed in this tool. The problem with the checklist is that they usually are only applicable in later phases. So the technology needs to be more advanced to check whether it um, applies to these ethical um, considerations. So what we need um, is more closer and more case-specific interventions. Another way to do this is, for example, consultation or expert opinion when a development team has a certain problem and an ethicist gives advice for a specific problem. This again is, it's, it's a close interaction with the development process, but it's a, at a certain time in the process. And what we are especially interested in are interventions which are throughout the process. So regular interventions where the ethicist works with the project team on a regular basis throughout the whole development process. And what we know, um, we also have the fully embedded cases. This is often in, in research projects where the ethicist is part of the project teams throughout the whole process. But we all know this is this is a luxury situation and this is not possible to scale this. And this is why we are interested if we can't always have this very luxurious situation where an ethicist is fully embedded, how often do we need interventions to have the same effect? When should they take place? And what makes an intervention a good intervention? And important for all of us, how context specific needs these interventions to be. So we know developments are very specific cases. How closely need these methods be adapted to the specificity of the design, for example. So these are guiding research questions for us. And um, I think this links very well to the discussion we had already this morning. How can we conceive this process of integration, of integrated ethics? And we frame this process as an epistemic process. So this is a mode of genera jointly generating knowledge in inter- and transdisciplinary ways. And in integrated ethics, several expertise needs to come together. So we have the expertise of the designers and developers. We have the expertise of the stakeholders which need to come into this process, direct or indirect ones, and we have the expertise of the ethicist. And um, for us, uh, the tools comes as another um, player with expertise. So in the tool embedded is already knowledge, our epistemic affordances, which allow us to reflect the technology in a specific way. And to bring all this together, we need an integration, we need an appropriate milieu of reflection where this reflection takes place in an appropriate process design. And with this comes another role, the facilitator, who brings this together and helps in the integration of this and to support the knowledge generation. So in our experience, what we need um, is an initial step to start this reflection, and this is a reconceptualization of technology or of the artifact, the technical thing. So what our experience is that um, usually technology is seen is in a very limited way and the technology is isolated from its societal context, from its embeddedness in cultural um, habits, practices. And for us to start ethical um, reflection is to broaden this reflection space, reflection from. So this contextualization is very important and only then we are able to observe changes of the socio-technical system, changes of the environment, for example, let it be local or global. 
to look at a temporal dimension. So does the technology have other effects if it's long time uh, anchored or not? And changes of the behavior. So our technology asks us to behave different. So how do we have to adapt? How has the technology been to adapt it? We can also have scaling effects, rebound effects, power relations. All this only comes in focus once we start a reconceptualization of technology. So this is a precondition of preparing the ground for ethical reflection. So now I showed you some theoretical background. Let's have a look of integrated practice, uh, integrated ethics in practice. So what we are doing at the Berlin Ethics Lab is developing methods for integrating ethics. So this is why integrated ethics and we develop and research what we call epistemic tools. So that means conceptual tools that support the development teams in their reflection process of ethical issues. And let it be methods, frameworks, interventions, or different formats where we step in, in the development process. And by this, we support the development teams with facilitated intervention. For example, to develop the visions which guide the technology development or to reflect ethical guidelines in relation to their development. Ethical, other ethical issues or enable exchange between the developers and stakeholders, for example. So by this, we develop step-by-step -step a toolbox for methods of integrated ethics we work on the one side very closely with development teams. And by this, we develop these methods, further test them in an iterative way and research on this. And on the other hand, we embed this in teaching and multiplier courses so that students and later multipliers will also be able to use these tools. To make this more tangible, I want to show you one example, which was also an eye opener for us. So that was an early intervention in a startup. And here um, the aim was to make a walk based authentication of a person. So the idea was this is something we we'll use, uh, could we use, for example, to automatically open the door because we all have very individual ways of walking. And by our reflection tool, it was able to extract the user, the development team had implicitly in mind, and that was this user. So and by extracting this and making this visible, it, was, it became possible to work on this. So the team clearly didn't want it to discriminate by, but by having this user in mind, they didn't think of handicapped people, for example, who might use a wheelchair. So there it becomes difficult with a walk-based authentication or cases where people change their boots. Now we have different walking patterns or as the idea was to implement this algorithm in a mobile phone, what about users with older, older mobile phones? So they wouldn't be able to open a door. And um, so preparing the ground for the reflection and making explicit, implicit assumption allowed us to enter the ethical reflection, and by this to support the development team in their own design process to consider these questions. And um, so this is also this uh, feedback we got. The workshop created a structured framework for sharing ethical issues, which usually happens informally and only between individuals. So preparing the ground and open the discourse made it possible to think about this. And this is uh, a tool we use, um, the implication plan. And this is what you can also explore later in the workshop. And the idea is um, the technology, so to say, is in the center. And this tool allows to explore preconditions and consequences of the technology when it is embedded on different um, areas. So technical preconditions, societal effects, or environmental or um, systems effects, for example. And by this, the development tool gets, um, prepares the ground to think about these questions. So that is an example, and the whole tool then is embedded in a, in a workshop, which allows a more systematic reflection of this. 
And um, these are other examples we currently work on. So we work a lot of automation and human machine interaction. So what I showed you with AI technologies goes for other technologies as well. So in the Romi project, for example, there we had the, um, an embedded ethicist in the project, and it was possible to change the, this, the, the vision for the technology development. So the vision becomes a guiding idea for the whole development process. And the assumption at the beginning was to replace the nurse in a care environment and by discussing, explicating the vision, discussing it, it, this vision changed instead of replacing the nurse to supporting the nurse. And the direct interaction was then to be designed with, between nurse and the care person. So working on the vision, which is a very early um, tool for development processes, or um, um, helps to change. And another um, example we are currently working on is robots in the public sphere. And there we can raise very fundamental questions. So what makes it a good interaction? What makes a good public sphere? So we get more and more social robots, which enter not only, uh, which do not interact with direct stakeholders, but not especially in the public sphere with indirect stakeholders. And this opens a lot of question what makes a good public sphere? How can um, robots enter this realm without losing our values for the public sphere? So that's some examples of our ongoing research at the moment. And doing this kind of work, we realized it's, um, it would be much easier if the engineers would have already um, a first experience and some basic knowledge on these contextualizations on ethical values, for example. And this is why we entered more and more also in curriculum development. And this is what I want also to give you a brief insight. So we started last year a think tank on integrated technology reflection with the idea, what um, do we need to change the curricula? And we are in a happy constellation at the moment at the TU Berlin. So there is a new framework for all the curricula issued one and a half years ago, which wants all the study programs to embed um, integrated technology reflection. So contextualizing um, knowledge, reflecting, ethically reflecting agency, these are core issues of this new framework. But the key question at the moment is how can we do this? How can we integrate this? And this is why we started the think tank. And these are, this is an ongoing process. So I, I just report a little bit on this ongoing process. So the idea is that we add to um, the teaching of scientific knowledge and scientific praxis, a reflection component. And this reflection comes to the focus on ethical agency so that it becomes more important to reflect your own doing in, in, in science and in your praxis. And as I said earlier on, contextualization, again, is crucial to, all, to, to see ethical issues. Only once we contextualize the technology and the knowledge the students learn, they will be able to see ethical issues in, in their designs. And with this other uh, values are highlighted such as sustainability, diversity, and good scientific practice. So, and after one year in this think tank, we have now worked on a, on a concept which now will be translated in the first prototype study program. And this is the concept. So the idea is that study programs have are guided by visions and values, which again are explicated. So explicating is an important step in these processes and existing courses, for example, can be changed by emphasizing certain issues. So there might be courses which have already sustainability as an important issue, but it's not so clear. So emphasizing as an approach, empowering where people in the technical disciplines um, who want to change something and to bet, for example, more ethical reflection, get um, support by experts, for example, to change some of their lectures. 
or by embedding so that in an existing course we get small modules which are taught by experts, for example, from the field of ethics embedded in the course. And complementary, so this is more what it uh, can be done in the existing um, courses of uh, engineering sciences. Complemented with this, we need some basics to be taught on ethics, sustainability, and this enrichment option for students who want to learn more on this in their pre-choice um, where we offer certificates. And what I think is also very important, what is here called interlacing. So we need more interdisciplinary role models. So also courses with teachers from different disciplines, for example, computer science and philosophy come together and teach, jointly teach a course so that the students also see how this comes together in practice. And this allows to create a master plan for the integration of these reflection components and ethics in the curriculum. So here are we now in the process of starting a prototype curriculum to implement this. And what we also um, launched now two years ago, um, which I already mentioned, is a certificate program. This is the Berlin Ethics Certificate, also called Reflection and Responsibility. And the students can uh, choose these in their electives um, or also add these courses to their study programs. And it can be studied as a micro degree with 30 ECTS or in a basic program with 18 ECTS. And we offer this since this semester also with some specializations. So bioethics and medical ethics, for example, animal ethics, ethics of AI, technology ethics and technology assessment. And here you see an idolized plan of this certificate. So the idea is that the students can study this during their study program. So um, in the first semester, we have um, a multidisciplinary sensibilization so we prepare the students to enter later on in interdisciplinary working room environments. An important step is here that the students learn about their disciplinary goggles. So they have a certain perspective, they have certain methods and to learn about their perspective, about limits of their knowledge and to start to appreciate other ways of knowing. So this is the um, multidisciplinary module and where they also are encouraged to um, to explore their own ethical questions. This comes in the second semester with an interdisciplinary focus. This is project-based where they work in teams, interdisciplinary teams, and um, this can be done in the specialization areas, for, for example, ethics of AI or technology assessment. And then in the third semester, transdisciplinary um, learning experiences where they start to interact also with societal stakeholders. Um, in the fourth and final semester, it becomes transformative. So here's the idea that they um, bring their reflection into society with different formats. And here you see the, the red um, rectangles are the basic program, so the students who want to do it in 18 ECTS do the basic module with this sensitization of profile project and the transdisciplinary technology design. And all those who want to do the full program, then they can add the in-depth studies and the reflection to action module. And so this is addressed at all the students at the university, and we have really a rich mixture of students. And this is really great and growing. So what we see is a growing interest and awareness of the students who really want to have this to be prepared for their professional life. And that makes us very happy to contribute to this. And with this, I'm at the end of my talk. So. I introduced to you the integrated ethics approach, which we have very closely embedded in technology development. 
the idea is to avoid unwanted, unintended consequences of technologies by an early implementation of ethics. And having said this, it's not the idea that this replaces all other measures. I think this is an one measure, addition, additionally measure in a whole set of different measures. But this is very early on both in research early on in the conceptual phases and early on in professional life that is in education and curriculum development. And we think these two areas really relate to each other. Once we have prepared the ground in education and curriculum development, it will be much easier later on to integrate ethics, to integrate contextualization in the uh, development processes. And with this, we hope to come closer to our vision of co-creating responsible futures by integrated ethics. Thank you very much. So we do now have about 10 to 15 minutes for questions. Thank you very much for this talk. I really see a lot of value in your approaches of bringing ethics into technology development. But I, the next question, uh, I don't ask uh, out of a mode of scrutiny, but really out of curiosity. When you talk of ethicist, what makes an ethicist an ethicist? Who is qualified to be one? Because I studied chemistry and applied ethics, for example, do I count as an ethicist? And in combination with the term expertise, like what would constitute the exact expertise of an ethicist? I believe you don't mean moral philosopher or moral philosophy here, but what is your, uh, your view here? Uh, yeah, so this is a question we discuss a lot at the moment. So what um, means ethics here? And I think what we need is a, a broader notion of ethics and a more narrow one. So of course, someone uh, and the broader notion of ethics is a lot about reflecting, discussing, contextualizing, seeing the technology embedded in a person who can guide this and stir certain questions and hint there. This, in this broader definition is an ethicist, yeah, if, if the person is trained there. And, and then, of course, we need the more narrow definition, the specialist maybe on AI ethics, for example. But this again, um, is not exactly moral philosophy. This might also enter at some points, but what we see in ethics of technology that we need a combination of different domains also to be the ethics expert there, because you can't do AI ethics without having a deep knowledge on AI technologies, because the ethical issues really come at the center of the technology. So this is what I explained at the beginning with the principles to practice gap. If we only talk about um, values, we, we don't know what to do in the technology development. This is why I think also the more narrow definition of ethics is already an interdisciplinary profile, I would say. Of, yeah, It has an ethical grounding in the disciplinary grounding, but it needs additional training, additional knowledge. Many thanks. I, I really appreciated that you um, talked a lot about teaching as well. And um, I'm curious about whether you also incorporate approaches to decolonize the curriculum. A curriculum. To some extent, I wonder if integration and decolonization are even the same, whether we should even use the word decolonization, but I think that's another yeah, question. But I'm just curious to what extent this also plays a role, because it seems to be yeah, a big thing at many universities um, these days. So, so I'm curious how this yeah, plays a role in, in integrated ethics programs. Um, so as we uh, uh, um, deal a lot at the moment in teaching with AI ethics, you have this immediately because you have globally technologies which are trained in certain parts of the um, global sphere and applied in others. So this comes immediately in. We have a lot of discrimination in these technologies and these um, this technology also um, extravagates existing discrimination. So I think these issues are on on there as right from the beginning. Uh, 
But what we also make very, so we work with a lot of, um, so we develop courses on technology assessment, and this is also bringing together different perspectives. And as we have very international students, as we also teach in English, this is also in these teams an issue. As we make clear, it's you, the better this assessment will be, the more perspective you bring in there, and then it becomes also very valuable to have different cultures in the team, to have different gender in the team. So these issues are part of the process. But yeah, so we try to implement this. Of course, this can be still improved. Yeah? And I think also students bring this more and more in their work with an issue. Yeah, so this is an answer to the question. I wanted to connect to the question. He asked um, for the tools and methods you want or you aim to develop for research and development. Um, are those supposed to kind of substitute the ethics expert or will an ethics expert be needed to like implement those methods? So this for us is an open question. Yeah because this links to the scaling problem even so the what is the most uh, the biggest effort is the embedded ethicist so someone fully embedded also for the intervention to have someone there with a specialization is still something which might be difficult to scale really on a large scale so and one of our research questions is to what extent can we implement in the tools the ethical expertise so that we don't need the specialist in this process. So that, for example, the students can take these tools and use it later on without being an ethicist, for example. So, but this is for us, this is one of the research questions we have. How much ethical expertise do you need to facilitate these processes? What can the tools do on their own? Yeah, this, for me at the moment, it's not so easy to answer. And also for us on the other side, the question, how much of domain knowledge do we need as ethics expert? Because as the small example shows you, the, the issues, the ethical issues come at very technical details in the process. It's not only the user, but also the, um, in this project, for example, the Bluetooth um, um, arrangement was an issue because you discriminate older mobile phones with other connections, for example. So you need domain knowledge to, to point in the process to issues. And for us, this is another question. So how much do we need to know about the specific domain? And to what, yeah, so how well can we transfer, for example, these tools to other domains, which we at the moment develop for AI technologies, basically, or human machine robotics, human machine interaction. To what extent can we transfer this. So I, all these are open questions for us at the moment. Um, thank you so much for this really very inspiring talk. I'm saving uh, the questions um, for um, uh, concerning the, the methods for the tools lab. Maybe just uh, if you uh, permit a question about your, your general framing. Colin a uh, uh, kind of um, conceptualized temporality as a variable whereas he said um, power and knowledge are um, somehow fixed um, uh, and, and are, um, or he had a specific uh, definition of, uh, of them. And I wonder if you break this up a little bit, uh, what uh, power and knowledge and also different conceptions uh, of them in these projects, what role uh, they play for you. So um, uh, what's, uh, what's the, the power of the ethicist in such a, um, in such a process? Um, because temporality is one thing that can um, vary, but uh, maybe we can also reflect on um, on the other dimensions that uh, that Colin Rich, um, uh, mentioned, who's focused on control of technologies. So I was wondering, what's your goal? What's your focus? Is it also controlling um, technologies from a, so um, a social perspective? So at the, we work at the moment really on the level of development teams, not on the societal level, so to say, but also here power issues are, of course, a very important question. And what is the, 
how well recognized is the ethicist? Uh, is the person in a minority? So we also had bad experiences in research projects where in a large research consortium, the ethicist was in a minority role and couldn't raise his or her voice, for example. So this is about power, disciplinary power relations, but of course, also in the ac academic sphere, you have the professor and the um, PhD student. Is the PhD student as an ethicist able to raise the voice? So there are a lot of power issues in these processes. And what we see in, in, to, to make these interdisciplinary processes a success, you need, um, you need to, certain values for the whole process. Yeah? Um, mutual recognition, equal dignity, and so on, to bring these knowledges together. If you have knowledge, strong knowledge hierarchies, it becomes difficult of bringing these people together. So I think these um, these processes, yeah, uh, have more challenges. Not only bringing different kinds of knowledge and expertise together, but designing these processes in a certain way and establishing a culture of collaboration, a certain culture of collaboration. And this culture of collaboration has a lot to do with no, um, power relations. And yeah, I think there are a lot of questions how to create these milieus of reflection, joint reflection, this collaboration, and to establish the values which make it possible to enter in such a joint knowledge generation. But yeah, just to add to this, but, so as this all is also ongoing research, I don't have finalized answers, but for us, of course, is a question now, we enter very closely a, a development process are we responsible, also responsible uh, of the results? Yeah. And what about if we raise our voice in these processes are not sufficiently heard, for example? Nevertheless, we were part of this. So I think there are also very difficult questions for ethicists because ethics uh, usually is more detached and has a distance. And this is also um, makes it easier to, to raise criticism, for example, and yeah, so I think in this are a lot of questions which are unsolved yet yeah. and difficult to solve. We, we, we do have one last. Thank you very much. Thank you for, for the presentation. I totally agree. I think it is a necessity to, to have such uh, um, approaches. But from my experience is also working with startups and SMEs. Um, my core question is, and I hope you have an answer for me, how can you convince startups or SMEs uh, to get engaged in such a process? Because it's a matter of money and an openness and uh, we don't want to be a tick box. So do you have any ideas how we can, what is needed uh, in order to, to get this uh, change process? Um, so, uh, we are working, so for us it's the same problem, but we are working with a, at the university with the center of, we have a collaboration with the center of entrepreneurship and they have a hub for the startups where um, they already point to the option to have an intervention with us. So I think it needs the right environment which supports this. And of course the investors which um, who say, and this, I think, uh, from this becomes more that they say we want startups which adhere to ethical uh -huh. values, for example. So I think it's also the environment which has a major impact on this. It's not only us who can change this. So I think the hubs for the startups, for example, have a major role, the investors. So that's my answer at the moment, but of course with the startups um, it's difficult. So I, our wish is to be more continuously in the process and we haven't managed this yet. So the, the maximum was one intervention and then, and that is part of the time issue as well. But if, if there are more, if the pressure becomes more as a stronger, for example, that it needs really to be implemented that might change. Thank you.
thank you for your inspiring talk and thank you for the questions which opened up many topics that we will meet again in our tools lab so thank you thank you